ladies, ready women in my Lisa Shaw Cares um, business, ministry, excuse me, and leadership group. I, my name is Lisa Shaw, for those who uh, may not know me well, and I love uh, coaching, ministering, teaching women who I like to call ready women, uh, women who are leaders in ministry, leaders in business, leaders in, in their homes, perhaps, um, speakers, teachers, authors, um, entrepreneurs, coaches, um, women who work in the marketplace, um, women who lead various areas of ministry, um, pastoral leaders, and so forth. And for over 31 years now, I work with them to navigate obstacles and really gain clarity and make fierce and courageous decisions um, in the things that they want to accomplish and the things that God puts in their path. Um, I believe passionately in personal development. I think a lot of times people focus on marketing, they focus on their branding, they focus on, you know, it's like focusing on the cover of a book that you haven't written yet. Come on. And so sometimes we focus on all these other things. They focus on businesses that we want to start or ministries we feel called to lead, but we haven't worked on our personal development. And under that umbrella, things like your core values, um, your understanding what your core values are and how to use them, um, knowing what your real strengths are and how to use those. Um, how to focus on what's working well instead of always focusing on what's not working, um, how to navigate through obstacles like fear and other insecurities. Um, some of the most incredible women that uh, are doing, fulfilling the things that God has purposed for them um, still deal very heavily in fear. And so I work with people that way as well. And then I help women who are ready to leap and launch into uh, a particular area of business or ministry or women who are transitioning from um, their job to their own business and things of that nature. So I kind of, God uses me in a combo way to minister, to teach, to coach, to consult. Um, I don't just do one-on-ones, but I work with groups. I also work with building teams. So I work with small businesses and medium-sized businesses, occasionally larger businesses. So just wanted to share that because I'll probably be posting this video also on my YouTube. Excited about that. But we are in number five under seven tips to living a fulfilling life. So I'm here in my office and I'm kind of leaning on my chair. This is meant to be pretty casual. And uh, we have gone through um, four tips. You can go back and see those on the video. But today we're gonna to talk about tip number five, which is making God's word and prayer a priority. Now, I really thought about this and I also prayed about it because I didn't want to sound like the norm of, you got to read the word, obey the word, you know, got to have a prayer life. Those are the norms and those things are true and those things are, are important. But I wanted to take it from a little bit of a different or perhaps for some deeper um, angle. And I wanted to tell you um, why it's important. Why is it important to make God's word a priority and to make prayer a priority? Well, so we know some of the answers to that, right? Um, as Christians, we should want to ingest the word of God. Um, it's like being in a marriage that you don't have any real relationship with each other. Who wants that, right? So when we're in a covenant relationship with God um, through Christ, we want to have um, that part of that relationship is ingesting his word and praying because then we're having conversation with him and we're also hearing from him, right? Prayer is not a monologue, it's a dialogue, right? And so sometimes, especially when you've been saved a long time, when you've been a Christian a long time, I mean, you can quote a scripture. If I started to say something, all things work together, you would finish saying, for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, right? And so when we say the long time scriptures become well known to us and familiar, 
um, what we do in church becomes familiar. Um, certain stories in the word are familiar. If I said David right now to you, you, there's a thought that would come to your mind. If I said Moses, if I said Deborah, if I said the Virgin Mary, if I said Mary Magdalene, if I said the Samaritan woman, um, if I said Elizabeth, if I said Mary and Martha, if I said Joseph, uh, if I said Moses, there's certain things that would come immediately to your mind. If I said Elijah or Elijah, there's certain things that would come immediately to your mind because these are these are men and women in the word of God um, that we're familiar with, right? And so sometimes, unfortunately, we can also become too familiar with the word and too familiar with prayer. And we start to, to kind of let that be our go-to occasionally and not have it actually be what leads our day. And so now I wanna to talk to you as ready women. I wanna to talk to you as women that are making a difference in the areas of influence that you have, the ways that God uses your life every day, okay? Whether it's on your job, through your business, in an area of ministry or, in, or leading a particular area of ministry, or maybe you're an author, you're writing a book, uh, maybe you're a speaker, um, maybe you, you serve in the, in the educational arena, maybe you serve in the medical arena, um, whatever it is that you do, I wanna talk to you on that level. When I say make um, God's word and prayer a priority, what I'm talking about is not just the regular stuff that we talk about, but actually allowing communication with God and ingesting his word to lead our day and to lead our life. And so let me use an example of that. Um, yes, I pray in the morning, right? I acknowledge God and I have my prayer time with God, but it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop after I pray because I, before I get out of bed, it doesn't stop at a devotional that I do. I am consciously aware of God throughout the day and I wasn't always like that. So let me put, let me throw that in there, right? I've been saved a long time since I was 12 and I'm 56 now but this is still my birthday month, but I wasn't always like that. I had to grow into it, right? We had to grow into it. But once I grew into it and I realized long ago that God is interested in the work that I was doing in corporate America. He was interested in the work that, in the work that I was doing in ministry and the ways that I served and who I served. He was interested in all of that. And so when I learned to include God in that and not just pray about something that was gonna happen or pray about something that I needed or pray about how I needed him to show up in a particular area, but where I could also pray and have him lead my day, lead what I do, what I did in the corporate arena, lead what I did and do in my business, lead what how I serve in the church world since I was a young girl, lead how I serve in my own ministry even now, right? And so I had to learn how to involve God and, and the way I did that um, was to make him a priority and to say, you know what? I really want his word to lead me. I really, I really want I want to serve with excellence. I wanted to serve with excellence, not perfection. That's why my third book is about that. Not perfection, but I wanted to lead with excellence. I want to, and I still do, I want to serve the people that I serve, women and men, with excellence, not with perfection. To do that, I need God to lead my day, lead my thoughts, lead my words, lead my attitude, lead my behavior lead how I respond to something. Am I being reactionary or am I being proactive in my response, right? Whereas back in the day, my attitude was, oh, well, I'm hormonal. Or I didn't get any sleep last night. That's why I'm the way I am, right? It, it, isn't everyone entitled to have a bad day? So that was more my focus. And I had to learn how to, how to put that flesh down and say, you know what? Even with cramps, I could serve with excellence. And I've been way away from that a long time because <laughs> I had a hysterectomy in 1997. But I had to learn again to make God the priority. Pray and ask God to lead your day, to lead your life. Get in the word. Um, here's an example. Um, if you have a meeting on, you know, if you had a meeting today, if you have a meeting, go to the word. 
you know what the meeting's about. If you need more of the fruit of the spirit, go to the word, sit down and take a minute. Even if you know Galatians 5 by heart, go sit down and read it literally from the word of God. Read it out loud if you're in a place where you can do that. Pray that those nine fruits be present in you during your meeting and beyond. Pray for a spirit of patience. Pray to be respectful. Pray to have your mind open. Pray for clarity. Pray for wisdom. If you're leading people, uh, if you're influencing people, whether you're a teacher of young children, excuse me, whether you're leading a nursing team, whether you're leading a ministry group, whether you're leading a church, whether you're leading a, a, a organizational team or your business team, whatever it is, you need wisdom to do that. You need wisdom, you need creative ideas, you need God to give you those things, to, give, to, to help you to be innovative, to creative, and to lead not from a place of emotion and not from a place of feeling depleted or exhausted, if that's how you feel, but from a place of how, what will be pleasing to God. I even pray for God to refresh me. In the mornings, at night I pray, but in the mornings I ask God, refresh me. I don't sleep very well. And I haven't since my childhood. So oftentimes I have to say, God, I need you to refresh me. Because I don't want to bring to the table of my day in, in what I do in ministry and business, I don't want to bring to the table of that my lack of sleep where I'm crabby and irritable, right? And so when we make God's word and prayer a priority, then God can lead our day and lead our life. And that's important because somebody, first of all, we want to honor God. But secondly, somebody's watching you. There's, 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 there's no greater compliment. Well, I'm sure there is, but this is a great compliment. It's when someone knows you're going through hell and tells you, you don't look or sound or act like you're going through the hell that you're in. That's a beautiful compliment. Why? Because it means that God is leading your life. He's leading your day and he's leading your life. He's leading your attitude. He's leading your thoughts. He's leading what comes out of your mouth. He's leading how you're treating people. He's leading your heart behavior. He's leading. We're not going to be perfect at it. We're going to have times of struggle, but God's word is there to equip us. His word is there to comfort us, to encourage us, but also to, to convict us in areas of sin. But also when I say convict, I don't mean to, you know, like to beat you over the head. God's word is not to condemn. There's a difference between conviction and condemnation. The word of God tells us now, therefore, there is no condemnation in Christ. But the word of God does, through the Holy Spirit, bring conviction when we're messing up, when our attitude's funky. You know, when you're smiling at somebody, but your thoughts are saying something else. Come on. Right? And so the word of God helps us in those areas. It helps us to um, not get caught up in something. And I'm not going to tell you not to get offended because I think that in our humanness, we do sometimes get offended. And sometimes rightfully so, because people can be really ugly and nasty toward you. However, it's how we behave in that offense. Do we hold it, become bitter, unforgiving, judgmental, all of that? Do we close off or do we, or do we involve God, his word, and, and, and involve him directly through prayer and say, you know, Father, heal my heart from this offense. Help me to heal through this. I don't want it to be an active, open wound in my life every day because I don't want it to get in the way of what you've purposed me to do. That's not an easy prayer to pray, but it's worth it. It's worth it. So I want you ready women to look through your day. Look at your life. Where are the, where are the places that God uses you? Who are the people that God uses you to influence, to impact in some way? Even if you're, if you're at home, there's people you're impacting. There's somebody that you're influencing. Okay, so how does he use you at home, on your job? Maybe you're a business owner like I am. 
okay? How does he use you in that? Who is he using you to impact? Maybe you're in the educational community, the medical community, the creative community, the arts. How is God using you? And who is he using you to influence? Even if you're retired, there's a way that God's still using you. So I want you to examine that. I want you to think about that, those areas, and then ask yourself, how can I bring the word of God and prayer into this where it's a priority, where God is leading my day and my life. Now, I just wanna, I wanna say this, cause I know for some, they might be thinking, well, I already pray every morning. I mean, I ask God to, you know, leave. that's not what I'm talking about. Yes, do that, pray every morning. I do that too. But even when I pray, when I get out the bed and I pray, and sometimes I pray before I get out the bed, when I'm entering into my office, I sit down and pray again. I ask God, lead my day, lead my attitude, lead my mouth, lead my disposition, lead me, Father. Sometimes I go to, um, to well, I go to different verses in the word, in Jeremiah, in Joshua, in 1 Samuel, uh, Luke 1, Romans 8. I go to different chapters, different verses, verse Peter four. I go to different places of the word. Galatians five is a biggie for me. And I go to either the chapter or to a specific verse and I pray it over myself. I want his word and I, I want God and I want his word to lead, to lead me. So I make time with him a priority and I make his word a priority. Again, this is not about perfection, okay? So I don't, I don't wanna give that impression that you gotta be praying all day long and in the word all day long. That's not what God's saying to us, right? But we do wanna be what I call God conscious, where we're consciously aware of God throughout our day. And so I pause and pray often. I could be driving in my car and just start praying. Take a break, go get something, and I'll be praying right? Why? I want him to lead my life. I need him to lead my day. I hope this encourages you. It's number five tip for the seven tips to living a fulfilling life. God wants us fulfilled. Jesus told us in John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I have come that you would have life and have it abundantly to the fill, to overflow. When we're not living that way, somewhere in there, it's not just the attack of the enemy, but somewhere in there, there's a shift or a change, a decision, a transition that we need to make in order to align ourselves with that promise from the Lord. I hope this helped you ladies. Um, I love you, I'm praying for you. And we have two more tips and um, I'll be sending out some information to you. Uh, I'm just trying to, you know, I wanna hear God on when to release things and um, when to invite you into some of the Zoom groups that I'll be doing and all of that stuff. Those are paid opportunities for you to invest in yourself and to have a little bit more one-on-one -on -one with me as well as small group with me so that I can really answer your questions, coach you, pour into you, help you in the areas that you're in. We all need that. I have a business coach. I mean, we all, we all need that, right? We all need that. It's a benefit, big benefit to that. So God bless you. I'll talk to you soon. God bless.